The clan is gathering. This is great. Just to watch everybody just come in and uh, especially welcome, especially our visitors, guests from Clark Summit. We know where Park Clark Summit is because that's where Bill Carter has his has his church, the Presbyterian Church down there. Bill is a jazz pianist and and uh, has a jazz group, uh, Presby Bop, it's called, and uh, he plays up here with us. So welcome to you. Welcome everybody to the First Congregational Church, United Church of Christ. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here at this First Congregational Church. We especially today welcome Daniel Ling, Reverend Dr. Daniel H. Ling, da -da 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 -da, to our pulpit. Uh, Daniel is a retired Methodist minister. Uh, he has also served in official capacities throughout the Twin Tiers since 1975. He's been here. So uh, he's a well-known feature, shall we say, in our area. So we're glad to have Daniel with us this morning. Daniel, I have to tell you a quick story I read last night where a Methodist church out in Minnesota was desperate for new members. So they asked everybody over the age of 60 not to come to church for 18 months so that they would have time to recruit young people. <laughs> we should pray for the Methodist church. Okay. All right, announcements. Uh, everything is in your bulletin except except the fact that the trustees will have a short, I'm told, very short meeting over in that corner after worship today. So if all the trustees will gather over there, uh, Bernie will be very happy with you. Uh, also, Jazz Vespers, I mentioned Bill Carter a minute ago, Jazz Vespers, oh, there's Judy today. I thought you were going to be uh, away today, so... Did you want to say Jazz Vespers? Do you want me to do this? Okay, so Jazz Vesper is a week from today, February 9th, miles ahead. If you don't know miles ahead, you've got Larry, Tom, Jean. No, Tom. Oh, yeah, Tony Marino from Pennsylvania down there, your way. Uh, he is fantastic. Oh, the, you, you've got some top flight, absolutely top flight jazz people are going to be here next Sunday. So put that on your calendar, 5 o'clock. Uh, bring your Valentine with you. It'll be that kind of a program. And today, after, flower, after uh, the altar flowers, <laughs> can't read this writing. The altar flowers were donated by Tony Rorapal uh, in honor of all February birthday babies. You know, we have some Valentine people down here. They want to talk to you. Okay, who's going to do it for you? Gonna... Oh, we got it. Oh, look at this. Yeah, we're in Greece up here. <laughs> well, this is February, and this is the month all we need is love. If I could sing that for you, I would love to. Valentine's Day, everyone here has someone that they love, and we have wonderful treats and wonderful tea and cook. Well, I'll leave that to Judy, but we're open till 2 o'clock today in the gift shop, and we'd love to have you stop and visit. Now, I have a little story to tell you about this teddy bear. It's called the Teddy Bear Valentine Tea, and this teddy bear was my husband's when he was two years old. This teddy bear has been around for a little while, and I took it out of my cedar chest and I said, have you ever been to a Valentine's tea party? He smiled at me. No, he has never been. So today he's coming to his first Valentine's tea party, and I hope you will join us. We will be there till two o'clock, and now I would like Judy to talk about what we have. <laughs> Well, many years ago, a friend gave me this little calligraphy poster that she created, and it has a verse from uh, scripture from 1 Corinthians 13. I think it's familiar. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. 
And I am told, because I wasn't here way back then, that the gift shop um, began uh, a few years ago with the vision and the love of Mrs. Enos. And Mary Cudabat has kept that spirit alive. And now many of us in the church are carrying on um, that spirit, that legacy and love um, with kind of a fresh and, and new uh, update in the gift shop. If you've even peeked in there, you know what we're talking about. So we, we have a lot of things in there that are going to enrich your body, your mind, and your spirit. I wanted to say, though, too, that um, working with Mary and Julie these past couple of weeks has truly been a labor of love for me. Um, I, I'm not sure what I would do without the friendship of these um, women. We gathered every morning and we offered a prayer of gratitude to our Mother, Father, God. And we honored our woman spirit, our woman power. Mary put the kettle on for tea. Mm -hmm. We broke bread together. We shared sandwiches and stories and we sipped more tea. One late afternoon, this was just, I think, last week, you know, we were exhausted after working for so many days, um, looking at this lovely space that we feel we've created. And as I say, we were exhausted. So we came into the parlor and we sat quietly, sipped our tea, and we had only the light of um, these flameless candles um, around our table as we were sipping our tea. And we didn't even notice. We were drinking our last cup of tea um, before the shop was open. And we didn't even notice that the dark had descended out <coughs> here. Um, love filled our hearts. So we hope that you feel that love when you step inside the shop today. Make sure you look, make sure you listen, make sure you taste, and make sure you smell. Um, because it's going to be an experience. We want you to have fun, and of course, we want you to enjoy a cup of Valentine's tea. And of course, shop till you drop. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, ladies. That was lovely. Well, I'm going to introduce you first to my escort to the teddy bear tea. He's my new boyfriend. His name is Theodore Ted, Ted, Teddy, or Teddy Bear, depending on what kind of mood we're in. So I'm here to announce to you and share with you that we have a special drawing that has been inspired by the eternal love of those who are with us in this room today and those who have ascended unto heaven. It's a drawing, it's a $50 value of a gift certificate to the Lost Dog Cafe for a $5 love offering. You can enter two times. Marty is our financial secretary. He's been very supportive to us in these last months. He is officially going to do the drawing on February the 10th after the 9th because we're celebrating today and next Sunday. So Marty will do the drawing and we will make sure the person who wins will have the gift certificate in their hands before uh, the Valentine's Day. Now moving on, um, I would like to thank, there are some people in here I've mentioned Marty and Judy's mentioned love. The, the husbands of um, Mary and Judy, they've been so tremendously supportive to their wives. You hear me choking up. Um, and you know, there's been love in the air. There's been romance in the air besides their support. And I want to also thank Judy Giblin who has supported us. Irene Lawson is not here today, Carolyn Blake. Um, our beautiful Barb, uh, who's here with us today. And of course, our miraculous miracle worker, Cindy. 
So we have a lot to be thankful for. We thank you in advance for coming, but come and just share this time with us. It's our Valentine to you. This week, through the week, and after. I'm gonna finish up with a little, a little fun. Teddy asked me to. Um, I know that there's some of us that are going to go home and, and celebrate the afternoon by watching the Super Bowl, but I have another suggestion for you, or including thereof. I want a, th a special thanks, all the baked goodies that you're going to have from us as a gift were a gift from Chris O'Neill. So although there are some for sale, you're going to enjoy cookies. You're going to enjoy something tremendously sweet. Not only that, and this is where <laughs> Teddy, Teddy. <laughs> Chris has made a special love potion for you. It's actually a body scrub. It is absolutely beautiful. Phyllis has tried it this morning. We have one version in brown sugar, one in white sugar. And you know, and I tried it too. <laughs> Teddy liked it. And the thing is, you'll understand once you come and share the day with us, have some sweets, maybe try some of the body scrub, you'll understand why Chris and her husband are smiling all the time. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, all right. I, I didn't know about this, uh, but, but, well, I <laughs> put new tape in. But I'll, uh, I'll tell you what, if you want to buy your Valentine, one of my novels from the bookstore, for whatever you want to give, I will contribute that same amount to the bookstore. I'll even sign it for you, no charge. So there you go. That's just a special for today only. <laughs> Any other announcements today? That's it? Wow. Thank you very much. May the peace of the Lord be with you. I've just mentioned this is also flu season, so if you want to use elbows, please feel free to.
All right, we'll crank. How do I do that? Just whack this thing? Okay. Okay. What power? Whew. I gotta do it again. Is that good, Daniel? I do a good job. Okay. <laughs> Let us say that which we believe. We are made in the image of God, thus as we grow in faith and mature in spirit. That image shall shine all the more clearly. Like Jesus, we are children of God. Thus as our birthright, we shall live all our days surrounded by unconditional love. Humanity, the image of God, is beautiful in God's sight part of a magnificent creation. Therefore, we are beautiful in God's eyes. The scriptures declare that the entire kingdom of God is within us. Also, we live our lives immersed in divinity. We gather to celebrate that sacred and wondrous truth. Many hurtful and unjust things happen in our world, motivated by hatred or fear. Yet also there is love in our hearts, let us declare that love, acknowledge it as of God, and promise to grow in love day by day.
please in the call to worship. Dear God, who gets invited to dinner at your place? How do we get on your guest list? Walk straight, act right, tell the truth. Don't hurt your friend, don't blame your neighbor, despise the despicable. Keep your word even when it costs you. Make an honest living, never take a bribe. If you live like this, you never get let listed. You shall not rule. Let us worship God. Join me, please, in this prayer. Dear God, we love because you first loved us. We sing because you put praises into our hearts. We trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus. You are in control of our lives when we let you. We are often out of control when we try to take over. Help us to let go and let you guide us in all our ways. We know that inside your will, we cannot fail. Outside your will, we cannot succeed. Draw nearer to us as we draw nearer to you. Help us experience anew your presence in our lives and teach us to live in your presence daily with gratitude. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. and hear the word of God in this first reading of this morning's scripture from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. 
Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same purpose. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you by brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius so that no one can say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the house of Stephanus. Beyond that, I don't know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with elegant wisdom, so that the cross of Christ would not be emptied of its power. The word of God. Thank you. And if that word sounds familiar, yes, you did hear it last week when Zach preached on it at that time. Now, this is just going to be an indication, if you haven't learned this over the years of listening to sermon after sermon, that you can preach on the same scripture and hear more than one way of interpreting it. May I invite you to uh, use one of these in your pew. You know, I discovered that this is one of the least used Bible in the pew. A lot of time people dedicate, you know, pay for it, and it's never used. So for this morning, if you will cooperate with me, take this out right in front of you and turn to uh, page 165. It's always nice to have the page. So most people, when they want to read the Bible, and they can't find it. But if you turn to the page, then you can find it. Are you all with me on page 165? 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 to 10. What I'd like you to do, if you can, is we all read it together. Hearing the word is one thing, but reading it is another thing. So let's see if we can uh, read together, starting from verse 7. Are you ready? Yes. Have nothing to do with profane myth and old wives' tale. Train yourself in godliness, for while physical training is of some value, Godliness is valuable in every way, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance. For this end, we toil and struggle because we have our hope set on the living God who is the Savior of all people, especially of those who believe. The Word of God. I want to give all of you an award. And uh, I don't know, can you see me? I have risen. The award is called AWC. You know what that is? Next time when you send a thank you card or any kind of letter of gratitude, you know how people put numbers uh, uh, behind their name? Like if they have academic degrees, you know, BA, MA, PhD, you put AWC. And then they'll say, what is that? On such a snowy day, you are here, you are all weather Christian. (laughs) 
That will start a conversation. We want to talk about, you know, uh, what this scripture you just read. I don't know if any of you make any uh, New Year's resolution. You know, uh, most people want to be what? Physically healthy. So you do something, you know, uh, exercise or whatever. You want to be physically healthy and uh, physically fit. But today's scripture reading, it says physical training is good. It has some value. But spiritual training, and if you look at different, uh, what do we call uh, uh, this uh, translation, you'll find that uh, what you read is training in godliness. You know, a lot of people say training in godliness. What is that? Translate. It's simply, you know, what's the difference between physically fit and what's the other side? Spiritually fit. If you want to be spiritually fit, most of you know if you want to be physically fit, where do you go? You go to the gym, right? And you exercise, you do all kinds of things to uh, make you uh, physically fit. But if you want to be spiritually fit, where do you go? I think you should go to a uh, what? Spiritual Fitness Center. You know, I was thinking, God speaks to me all the time, and I, I like your bulletin. It says, God is still speaking. Are you listening? What will happen if we put a sign outside the church? You know, this church is so centrally located. You know, we are right at Main Street and Front Street, and we say, Spiritual Fitness Center. And people walk by, whoa, what is that? And then we put under this there, inquire within. <laughs> Go to the office, call the church leader, call the chair of the deacon. How do you become spiritually fit? Because spiritually fitness is important, not now, but what? Forever. Not just here, but what? Hereafter. So, what is it that we need to do to be spiritually fit? First, I think uh, we need to uh, remember who we are. When I was visiting here, it was wonderful uh, to hear uh, Reverend Bob White preach about baptism. You remember the Sunday? There is renewal of your baptismal vow. Now in the Methodist Church, every first Sunday of the year, we not only do that, we have what we call uh, a basin of water. And symbolically, the whole congregation come over and touch the water, touch your forehead and say, remember your baptism and be thankful. When Jesus was baptized, what happened? A voice from heaven say what? You are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. In teenage language, I am so glad to see a teenager here, right? You know what he says? My son taught me this language. He says, translate you are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Translation, hey dude, you are cool. You are cool, baby. You are cool. That's who you are. Created in God's image. And if you are created in God's image, I think it's very important that you have what I call a good self-esteem. You know, I do mentoring for Tiger Venture, Union Endicott School. And these are the, the school children who are not academic. And if the school don't help them, then they may not, you know, pass uh, and get the high school diploma. 
my son Peter, you know, is a computer uh, doctor, and he, he has a classroom there, and the students come, and I ask them, on the scale of 1 to 10, what number do you give yourself? 1 being low, 10 being high, for your self-esteem. And what number do you think they give? Uh, five, four. One boy consistently said, minus one. I was like, oh dear. They're from broken homes. They are from poor family. They can't even afford a computer at home. They have to go to the library. And if you go to a psychiatric ward, a mental institution, and you ask them, on the scale of 1 to 10, what number do you give yourself for your self-esteem? What do you think they say? Minus. Minus 1. People who are depressed. So I say, wow, if we are created in God's image, you know, if I ask you, what number do you give yourself for your self-esteem? Ten! That's right. All of you are a ten because you are created in God's image. And if you are a ten, you have to walk like a ten, talk like a ten, act like a ten. At the end of this service, I want you all walk out, walk like a ten. Because you're a child of God. You're created in God's image. And you want to be spiritually fit. Not only for this world, but for the next world. So how do you become spiritually fit? I think one of the things about, uh, you know, uh, being fit, you know, physically we know. This morning I was driving and people were running, you know, in the Highland Park. And was say, wow, these people really want to be physically fit. On such a day, normally you sleep in. They're out there running and uh, trying to uh, build up their physical strength. But I'm glad you are here for spiritual fitness. And what does it take to be spiritually fit? If you look at all the scriptures, the temptation of Jesus, the first temptation is what? You shall not live by bread alone but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. In other words, if you want to be spiritually fit, you know how we talk about, you want to be physically fit, you have to have good nutrition. You are what you eat. What goes in, you know, has to nourish your body. Spiritually fit, how do you do that? You have already done it this morning. All of you have read the scripture at least once a week. We have no time during the week, but today you read it. And it says, physical fitness is of some value. But spiritual fitness is more valuable because it's not only good for now, but good for hereafter. Jesus said, don't lay up treasures on earth but lay out treasures in heaven. And how do you do that? How do you become what we call spiritually fit? I think one way is to uh, ask the question. You remember a uh, rich young man, uh, you know, a uh, scholar in the law, Jewish law, came to Jesus and said, What must I do? to inherit eternal life. And what did Jesus say? You know the law? Sure. He says, what's the first commandment? Thou shalt love the Lord with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. What's the second? Thou shalt love what? Your neighbor as yourself. A lot of people say, hey Lord, I have no problem loving you. I can't stand my neighbor. (laughs) God says it doesn't work that way. (laughs) If you love God, God is going to say you have to love your neighbor. And you cannot really choose a lot of time. So I want to use at least two words to help us say spiritually, if you want to be fit, 
What will help you be spiritually fit? First word, I think, is like, uh, you know, real estate. I don't know if any real estate agent here. If you want to buy a house, what are the three words they use? Location, location, location. If you want to be spiritually fit, you know what are the three words you use? Relationship, relationship, relationship. Why? Because relationship with God is so important. How do you love God with your heart, mind, soul, and strength? And how do you love your neighbor? How do you get along with each other? How do you deal with conflict? How do you deal with hatred? How do you deal with hurt? You know, there's an old question uh, the Wesley Church or Wesley used to say, how is it with your soul? But today we say, how are things with your what? Heart. Ah, February is the month of the heart, right? Valentine's Day. Is your heart broken, still broken? Have you been hurt? Have you been angry? Do you harbor hatred? You know, your f- physical health is actually determined by your spiritual health. You know, when people are hurt, angry, afraid, worried, you notice that their health sometimes is affected. They are depressed. And sometimes you ask people, how are you doing? Nobody, you know, when they are not well, usually they say, my heart is broken. Nobody says, my foot is broken. They always say, my heart is broken. And, and if your heart is broken, who can put your heart back together so that you can be whole, so that you can be physically fit? So if the word is relationship, then I think we need to understand that Basically, there are uh, four stages of relationship. And it's from the Bible. You know, the first stage is what we call romantic stage. If you have ever been to uh, any kind of relationship, you notice that, uh, let's say Adam and Eve, for example, first couple, Genesis, you know, God created Adam. And then he says what? It is not good for Adam to be what? Alone. So God brought Eve. And when Adam saw Eve for the first time, what do you think Eve, Adam said? Woohoo! Wow! <laughs> Look at her. <laughs> I used to tease my wife. I said, I met her in 1962. And I married her in 1972. Ten years she was running away from me. <laughs> but God has God's wonderful plan. So the first day is also like, once your eyes connect, you say, wow, romantic is what? You're so nice, I'm so nice, we are so nice, hello. So you get married. After the romantic stage, it goes to the second stage. What is it? Reality. Oh, Lord. You know? You wake up in the morning and say, you snore last night. And you go to the kitchen and say, oh, it's so messy. Your desk is so messy. You start to criticize each other. And then the mistake most men make, most women make is, don't worry, I will change her. I say, good luck. I will change him. No. All you do is you hurt each other, right? You get angry. You yell at each other, and then, guess what happened? You hurt, and when you are so hurt that you don't go for help, then what do you do? You cry out and say, hmm, looks like it's not working. So physically you're there, mentally you say, I'm out of here. And then, from romantic to reality, what's the third stage? Desperation. I need help. <laughs> you know, I need to go counseling. Or who can get me out of this? 
I'm so angry. I make a mistake. But if by the grace of God you receive help, then you reach the stage of what? Acceptance. The hymn just you, you just sang, the opening hymn, help us to what? Accept each other. Suddenly you saw the light and you say, huh, you know what? You have faults, so have I. You know, if you accept my faults and I accept your fault, maybe we can have a chance. Maybe we can start over again. Maybe we can say sorry. Say, please forgive me. Say, thank you. And then end with, huh, I got breakfast in bed. Wow, how did you do that? So you start to do nice things again, and then you get back to what? The first stage? Romantic again. Wow, you're so nice. Wow, I'm so nice. So the, the, the cycle goes on. Isn't that amazing? I think churches go through that, and uh, most people who have been married, they will tell you that we all go through that. I don't know what stage you are in. But to be spiritually fit, I think it's important to know that the strength comes from God. Why? Because God created us for God. God has a purpose for you and for me. Every time I stand up and share God's message, I cannot help but say, the longer I serve God, what? The longer I serve Him, the sweeter He grows. The more that I love Him, more love He bestows. So when you think of how God has a way to let us know what it is like to be what God wants us to be. I believe that God has a purpose for you, God has a purpose for me. What we need to do is to be spiritually fit so we can carry out God's purpose for our life so that God can use us in the way that will glorify God. Many times when people ask me, it says, how do you feel about being in ministry after you have retired? Do you know that this is my uh, third time trying to retire? I say, God has a sense of humor. When, uh, when uh, I read uh, your profile, I was, you know, strangely moved. The Wesley says, my heart was strangely warm. I was challenged because he says, no matter who you are, where you are in your life journey, you are welcome here. And when I think of my own life journey, I am the ninth child of 12 children. I mean, in today's generation, you think I'll be born? Not a chance, you know? So when I married my wife, I said to her, I said, you know, I'm a reasonable man. My father has six boys, six girls. I only want half. She looked at me and said, now with me. <laughs> I said, okay, we are two boys. God has God's plan. And I often think that God has a plan for me, for all that God has done for me. How do I show gratitude? For all that God has done for you, how do you show gratitude? How do you stay physically fit so that you are able to be the kind of person that God wants you to be? And when you are able to do that, then you will know that uh, whatever comes to you, you know, most people say, oh, you don't know our lives. We have all kinds of stresses and strain. I say, yes, we all have. The moment you drive out of, you know, uh, the parking lot, guess what? Somebody cuts you off. Whoa. You say, I'll show you. And then before you know, there'll be what? Road rage. 
sometimes we have no control over what happened to us. But by the grace of God, if you are spiritually fit, you have control how you want to what? React. Then you have control. Somebody cut you off, you say, eh, they are in a hurry. Or somebody tailgating you, you say what? Pull to the side and say, go ahead. Not that hard, but not that easy either. So what we have to do is to constantly ask for help. I want to close by saying that God speaks to us all the time. Are we listening? You remember the shooting at the American Civic Association? I was a pastor at Shenango Bridge. And there were a lot of immigrants. And some of them were from China. And one of my members worked with the emergency department and called me. He said, could you come down? The gunman is still in the room. They are asking for translators. She found out that I could speak Chinese. I could translate into English. And she asked me to come down and help. You know what? I got scared. I looked at my wife. I said, should I go? I don't have to. But there's a government there. And people are being shot. And some of them are from uh, foreign countries. And a lot of them from China. And they need translators. I was scared. I said, you know, I could die. What do I do? You want to be spiritually fit? Pray. And you know, as soon as I start praying, guess what came into my mind? I was scared. I didn't want to die. The word says what? Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of what? Death. I will fear what? No evil. For thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I was like, okay, thank you, God. I said to my wife, I'm going. I'm going because God is going with me. You know how the scriptures speak to us in our struggle, in our fear, in our worry. We just have to say, okay, God, I need help. And you will be surprised what God will tell you. This is what I'm going to do. And uh, this song is called, The Longer I Serve Him, The Sweeter He Grows. The more that I love Him, more love He bestows. Each day is like heaven. My heart overflows. The more that I love Him, serve Him, the sweeter he grows. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. The more that I love him, more love he bestows. Each day is like heaven, my heart overflows. The longer I serve Him, the sweeter He grows. Let us pray. Gracious God, we love because you first love us. Help us to love you and love one another the way that Christ showed us. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. The next hymn that you are going to sing in the Bow Days of Flower. If you look at the hymnal, it says, Natalie Sleeth. Natalie is the wife of my professor at Perkins School of Theology, Ronald 
sleeze. And I had the privilege of going to her house once a year. They invite us. And when I saw this hymn in your hymnal, I said, wow, this is a beautiful hymn. So let's stand if you are able to sing this. Microphone man himself. <laughs> Joys and concerns this morning that you'd like to share with everyone. Arlene. I would like prayers for my cousins Carol and Jim who are going through significant health issues and also a prayer of hopefulness for our granddaughter, Sarah, who auditioned at Crane Music School yesterday uh, in the choral department. Thank you. Oh. Wow. God in your loving kindness. Yeah. Tom, was that turned on? We have been praying for our neighbor, Roger Shady, for several weeks now. We learned this past week that he has passed away. Oh. So we wish him well. God in your loving kindness. For my friend um, Greg, who lost a grandson to drugs uh, recently. For your friend Greg. God in your loving kindness. For my mom, Mary Lou, at um, Bridgewater, please continuing prayers. And for a celebration of Bob's birthday, he got to be a bit older yesterday. God in your loving kindness. Prayers of joy that we have Ruth Titchler back with us today. <laughs> God's kindness is very loving, isn't it, Ruth? 
Uh, we just can prayers answer to that. <laughs> Sorry, Bob. <laughs> Uh, prayers of joy. Just uh, my parents celebrated their 45th wedding anniversary oh. last year. Oh, rather yesterday. Sorry. Um, I always think it's the second, but they were not married on Groundhog's Day, so that's good. But they just have been really great and good role models, so I'm I'm grateful for them. God in your loving kindness. I know this is hard to believe, but last week we clapped because my nephew John got a job. And as it turns out, he doesn't have that job. The guy thought he was someone else on the phone. <laughs> so he doesn't have a job. He's still looking for a job. So maybe if you can keep him in, his, in your prayers for a job, it'll, it'll happen. It will happen. Thank you. God, in your loving kindness. A couple of months ago, we prayed, we prayed for my cousin Jimmy, um, who has a son, who had a son, which would be my cousin Jimmy's grandson. Um, and Paxton got uh, brain cancer about eight months ago, and they operated on it, and they gave him um, chemo, and they said... If the cancer comes back, it's one of the medulla blastomas, which starts developing in utero even before the baby is born. Mm -hmm. And it usually starts attacking the, the child by the time they're three or four or even five. And um, my cousin Jimmy lost his grandson. My cousin's son lost his son. And Paxton is now in heaven, and he leaves behind a five-year-old sister by the name of Kenzie. And they live out in Colorado. And if you just would all pray for some, for Jackie and Justin, who are the parents of Paxton, pay, please pray, pray for Kenzie, who is Paxton's five-year-old sister. And my cousin Jimmy and his wife Julie, who lost their grandson, and my Aunt Anna, who lost her great-grandson at three years of age, three weeks ago. Thank you. Oh God, for a great deal of your loving kindness. Yes, ma'am. I'd just like to have prayers for my son, my, my sister's dog again. He ended up back in... Emergency surgery. His name is Jackson. Last night, um, he's a golden doodle, and anybody who knows the doodles knows what wonderful dogs they are. He he is doing okay today, and will come home tomorrow. But he is 11, so this is a very life-threatening situation. So anyway, prayers for him, and then prayers of gratitude. My son turns 42 tomorrow, and he turns 42 tomorrow as a so clean and sober man. And as a result, his life is going very, very well. And then also just prayers for all people caught up in addiction and prayers for all, gratitude for all people who have found recovery. God, in your loving kindness. My, my Bob has reached the point now where he is having some side effects from the radiation and... Um, this is the this is the long haul part of it. So I would appreciate any prayers that you have, extra or otherwise, and also prayers for the family of Chuck Loudon, who um, played with Mason Warrington in the trombone section until he was 90, and um, lost his wife um, maybe five years ago or so. They were married 78 years. Ooh. And he died this week at 102. But he was a, an amazing man. And um, he'll be missed by a lot of people. God, in your loving kindness. Um, uh, yeah. uh, continued prayers for my friend Mary Lou. I told you about her a week or so ago. Uh, she's having cataract surgery tomorrow. And I'm hoping that um, the removal of the cataracts will improve her vision, but she does have that corneal problem, and so we don't know what may happen. Um, uh, I would also like prayers for uh, my nephew, Justin, 
Uh, he had been posted, that was the word I couldn't think of before, he was posted to Aviano in Italy for a couple of years, his first two years, and now he is being uh, stationed in Turkey. So he, he needs prayers there. Thank you. God, in your loving kindness. Uh, uh, prayers for my sister, who happens to be my last surviving sibling. Uh, a couple of months before Christmas, she was having some dizziness issues. Uh, they're thinking MS, but they're not sure yet. And she just had a lumbar puncture this past Wednesday, so fingers crossed. Hopeful, hopeful, hopeful. Um, and her name is? Bonnie. God, in your loving kindness. And then prayers for a friend, Lori. She has multiple health issues, but pray for strength, because where she works, it's actually a toxic environment, and it's affecting her mentally, so pray for strength for her. God, in your loving kindness. Join me, please, in prayer. Almighty God, who led our ancestors out of conflict and into this land, we thank you for what was ordained to be fair and free and for its worthy aims and charities. We're grateful for people who've come to our shores with customs and accents that enrich our lives. You've led us in the past forgiven evil, and will lead us in the present and in the time to come. So create in us a love of peace and liberty. Where we failed by restricting freedoms and neglecting what you established as right, forgive us. Forgive a pride that overlooks such national wrong, such individual disdain, or attempts to justify injustice. Rather, give us a voice to praise your goodness and a will to serve you now and always through Christ. Hear the prayers we've offered to you by name, our personal concerns. Hear our prayers for those whose ambitions exceed their skills. For those we forget from one meeting to the next. For those who seek patience for healing and for health, not only for themselves but for others. We pray for those whose minds are clouded and confused. for those who wait in pain for impending death, and for those upon whom death has arrived. For those who bear the curtain, burden of care and love for broken minds and bodies, for all caregivers. And most especially we pray for the unloved and forgotten as did he, the one who calls upon us to say when we pray together, Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Let us now worship God with our tithes and our offering. Accept, O God, these our offering, transform them and use them for the work of your church. Help us to give not only our money, but also our time and our talents for thy service to Jesus Christ, who gave his life for us. Amen. Let us sing, Won't you be, let me be your servant. Oh, yeah. 
blessing, the benediction together. Blessings and honor and glory and power be unto him who sitteth upon the throne and unto the land forever and ever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.